Hey everyone, Eric here. In this video, we're checking out the Dystorpia from Noise Engineering. So Noise Engineering has been on the scene for a while now. I'm actually fairly new to knowing about the company, which is very exciting for me. Chris from Noise Engineering reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to check out their first kind of dive into the world of pedals. And the way it was described, I immediately said yes. So, so we have the Dystorpia. Now this is a wild, wild distortion pedal. Let me read from the manual here. It says right here, it says futuristic fuzz, dystopian distortion, and overdrive oblivion. <laughs> and honestly, I think that's a pretty good way to describe this. This is a digital pedal and it's a distortion with a whole bunch of different features that are more familiar to synthesizer and like Eurorack players and not and less so to guitar players, but I think it's a very exciting pedal. So before we jump into it, let's go over the signal chain. I'm using my Neptune humbuckers going into the Dystorpia out to the Boss Katana set fairly clean. <laughs> So any distortion or any effect that you're hearing is coming out of the Dystorpia. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I wanna go over a, a couple more straightforward controls because this pedal is wild. So let's go over the, the more straightforward controls. Up here in the top left, we have the gain control and by default, without doing anything, you're controlling the input gain, which is the level of signal going into the circuit. So if we turn it all the way down, we're gonna get a quieter signal going into the circuit. And then as we turn it up, we're gonna push more and more volume into the circuit. And then you can actually control the output gain or the output volume by pressing and holding this left foot switch right here. The LED turns green and then now we're controlling the output volume. So we can fine tune it to however loud we want. Another more straightforward control that we have on the Dystorpia is the blend control on the top right of the pedal. If we turn it all the way up, we're only getting the Dystorpia distorted signal. So that's just the Dystorpia signal and we can kind of blend in more of our clean signal by decreasing the blend control. And you can hear that at minimum, we're only getting dry signal or clean signal. And one thing that's cool is that where the Dystorpia signal and the clean signal blend back together is actually before the tone control. So we're gonna move on to the tone control because if you have it all the way down with only dry signal, the tone control still affects the dry signal. And we can hear that by turning it up. This is a pretty wild tone control, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll the blend all the way back up so we're getting distortion. And at minimum on the tone control, we get a darker sound. At minimum, we're gonna roll off a lot of high end, emphasize the low end. And as we start to turn the tone control up, we're gonna get a more and more trebly sound. And 
and you can hear it's pretty aggressive. Now, the tone control has a, a cool like extra feature is that once you get up past a certain point on the tone control up at the higher end of the spectrum, then the lows start to come back in and we get a more mid scoop sound. So I'm gonna play a little bit and then go up from this position right here. Next, we have the mid-band control. Now, this controls the frequency of our mid-band focus. So if we turn it down, we're sweeping the midpoint down the frequency spectrum. And if we turn it up, we're sweeping the midpoint up the frequency spectrum. So let's go ahead and start with the lowest setting, play a little bit, and then we'll go up from there. Next up, we have the fold control, which is in the top middle of the pedal. And this is where the dystorpia starts to kind of reveal its origins in synthesis and people that understand a lot more technical things than I do. Let me read what it does from the manual. So the fold control is a wave folder that inverts the waveform rather than clipping it at the peak. So it says you can turn it up for gritty, growly, gnarly tones. Now. This is true. I also wanna make it known that, well, most of the controls are pretty interactive, so it's all kind of relative what these controls do to where the other controls are positioned. So you get a feel of what it kind of does, but it's gonna have a drastically different sound with other controls in different positions. So if we turn it all the way down, we're getting no wave folder or no inverted waveform. As we start to turn it up, our waveform is going to start to hit the peak and then instead of clipping, it's going to be folded, which I'm not sure exactly what it means, but let's hear it. <laughs> Now, as I said before, the fold control is very interactive, spe especially with the Pura control. So we're gonna go on to the Pura control, and this is a full wave rectification. Now, at minimum, we're not getting as much rectification. As we start to turn it up, we're getting more and more. And Noise Engineering says in the manual that it gives a harmonically rich and fuzzy tone, and it also plays very well with the fold control as we've stated before. So let's go ahead and hear what the Pure Control does from minimum to maximum.
And now we've come to the doom toggle, which is a word that I am very familiar with, <laughs> and I can, I can understand this one pretty good. So the doom toggle has three positions, off, sub, and blown. Over on the left-hand side is off, which we've been hearing most of the demo, and that is no lower octave present. <laughs> just the, the initial octave right there. If we turn to the sub, it's gonna add in a lower octave. Very cool, very synthy sounding. And then if we turn over to the blown position, we're gonna add in that lower octave at a higher volume to give a more blown out sound. Next up, we have the envelope toggle or the ENV toggle right here. Again, we have three positions. On the left-hand side, we have off. In the middle, we have DYN, I'm gonna say dynamic. And then on the right-hand side, we have gate. Now, this is kind of applying dynamics, compression, and a little bit of noise reduction in specific settings. So on off, we get none of that. We don't have any compression or dynamic control at all. In the middle, on the DYN setting, we're going to apply some noise suppression, but then also apply the input dynamics to the output. So let's go ahead and hear the off setting to the DYN setting to hear how it kind of sounds different. <laughs> And if we turn the toggle to the right position, we have a noise gate. Now this is going to cut the noise off at a specific threshold, and we're not going to get any sound below that threshold. So we can get, we can use it as kind of like a traditional noise gate, like as we have it set up right now. So if I don't play, you're not hearing anything. And as I start to play, you're gonna hear the, the gate open up and my, my sound is going to come through. <laughs> Very typical kind of noise gate style operation. But we can also use the gain control, the pre-gain control, to tailor our signal going into the circuit to kind of, instead of using it as a traditional noise gate, we can kind of get those sputtery gated sounds by lowering the, by lowering the gain. So we're kind of riding the threshold of where the noise gate cuts off. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit and then we're gonna go all the way down to minimum.
You can hear that at the minimum settings, we're still getting signal coming through, of course, but it's more of that sputtery gated sound rather than just a traditional noise gate. And then one last really cool feature of the Dystorpia is the left foot switch down here on the bottom. This lets you kind of grasp a part of a note or chord and it repeats it infinitely so you can play over that chord or note. It has a couple different operations. We can press and hold to momentarily latch onto the note and once you release, you release the note. No matter let go, it's gonna stop. Or we can quick tap to latch onto the note, and then if we want to stop it, we can quick tap again. So now I've got my Squire Classic by Precision Bass plugged into the Dystorpia, same amp, same settings. Here's a clean sound. And I wanted to show you this really cool setting that I found, but especially with the bass. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the tone knob off. So here's the clean sound. And then this is what the setting sounds like with the Dystorpia. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Dystorpia. I wanna send a huge thank you to Noise Engineering, especially Chris, for reaching out to me. Thank you so much for letting me demo this pedal. This is a really cool pedal. If you wanna learn more about the Dystorpia, I'm gonna leave links to their website in the description below. And while you're down there, if you are looking for any sort of other musical equipment and you wanna help support the channel, I do have affiliate links to Sweetwater, Reverb, and Amazon down there. Those links save you time by taking you directly to those sites or a product. Doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps support the channel by giving me a commission on anything you buy through those links. So thank you for watching. Thank you for using those links. Thank you to Noise Engineering. I hope you're doing well out there. I hope you're staying safe. And most of all, I hope you're taking care of yourself.